Have you heard the myth of Sisyphus? In ancient Greece, there was a king condemned by the gods to spend eternity struggling to forever push a huge boulder up a steep hill over and over again without ever reaching the top. Plenty of circumstances in our lives feel like this king's plight, having to do fruitless tasks that we repeat but never see results from. Maybe it's repeated losing efforts to lose weight and exercise more. Or perhaps repeated losing efforts at developing great relationships or starting a new career. Shirzad Shamin's book, Positive Intelligence, is written with that plight in mind and offers effective guidance to help us escape ruts and actually pursue our true potential. Here are eight of the best ideas in the book, Positive Intelligence, why only 20% of teams and individuals achieve their true potential and how you can achieve yours. Number one, according to the book's author, Dr. Shirzad Shamin, Positive intelligence suggests that we can radically increase the percentage of time that our mind operates as our best friend and, by doing so, achieve higher levels of creativity, productivity, and happiness. Shamin proposes that 80% of humans function below the optimal positive intelligence level, where we are truly in the the our-mind-is-our-friend category. Positive intelligence helps to identify different saboteurs who help us to stay trapped in what the author calls survivor brain mode. These saboteurs are our internal enemies, each with its own distinct voice, beliefs, and its and assumptions. Number two. Your mind has two modes, positive and negative. The author refers to the positive mode as your sage and the negative mode as your saboteurs. Shamin writes, A key to mental fitness is to weaken the internal saboteurs who generate all your negativity in the way they respond to challenges. Your saboteurs cause all your stress, anxiety, self-doubt, frustration, regret, shame, guilt, and unhappiness. Saboteurs include the judge, controller, avoider, victim, stickler, and five others. Your sage lives on in an entirely different region of your brain and handles challenges in ways that produce positive emotions like curiosity, empathy, creativity, calm, and clear-headed laser-focused action. Number three. Positive intelligence determines your potential. Your positive intelligence quotient, or PQ, is a measure of what percentage of time your mind is actively working for your good. The author believes that exercising positive intelligence might be one of the biggest factors for you reaching your potential. When your mind is on your side and working for you, you flourish. When your mind works against you, you flounder. Shamin writes, Your potential is determined by many factors, including your cognitive intelligence, IQ, your emotional intelligence, EQ, and your skills, knowledge, experience, and social network. But it is your positive intelligence, PQ, that determines what percentage of your vast potential you actually achieve. Number four. According to Dr. Shirzad Shamin, we can exercise three strategies to strengthen our positive intelligence. First, weaken the saboteurs. The saboteurs represent your internal enemies in your mind, the negative mode of your mind. Second, strengthen the sages. The sages are wiser and deeper you, the positive mode of your mind. And third, strengthen your positive intelligent quotient by exercising it. Number five, we spend our lives believing that our saboteurs are serving us, that they actually represent our strengths. A saboteur's lie is that it's helping me, that without it I wouldn't get anything done. In fact, it is preventing me from achieving lasting peace and happiness and real satisfaction with myself and my life. The author of Positive Intelligence writes, A saboteur does its greatest damage if it convinces you that it's your friend and you accept it into your trusted circle. Don't fall for the saboteur's seductive lies. They aren't your friends and you don't need them. Despite our saboteur's attempts to have us believe they are helping, they are actually the blockades that keep us from reaching our full potential. They are actually likely preventing us from achieving what we think they are helping us achieve. Because we are acting from our survivor brain when we are guided by our saboteurs, meaning that our actions are fueled by fear, anxiety, anger, and shame, the results are not at all what we say we want. Truly getting that our saboteurs don't serve us can be difficult. They've been around since we started having coherent thoughts, and they've played a big part in shaping who we are. Number six. The sage, or positive mode of your mind, can help you realize your potential and find your happiness when you need it most. Shamin writes, 
If your saboteurs represent your internal enemies, your sage represents the deeper and wiser part of you. It's the part of you that can rise above the fray and resist getting carried away by the drama and tension of the moment or falling victim to the lies of the saboteurs. Its perspective on any challenge you are facing is that it is either already a gift and opportunity or could actively be turned into one. Number seven. You can engage in strengthening exercises to make the sage inside you more powerful. Here are five of the most productive exercises. One, explore with great curiosity and an open mind. Two, empathize with yourself and others and bring compassion and understanding to any situation. Three, innovate and create new perspectives and outside-the-box solutions. Four, navigate and choose a path that best aligns with your deeper underlying values and mission. And five, Activate and take decisive action without the distress, interference, or distraction of the saboteurs. And finally, number eight. Contrary to how you might expect to take on an enemy, you don't fight your saboteurs head on, for that only strengthens them. The Positive Intelligence author writes, The most effective strategy for weakening your saboteurs is to simply observe and label your saboteur thoughts or feelings every time you notice them. Our saboteurs have been with us too long to be eliminated. What we can do is get faster at identifying them and acknowledging the power they'd like to exert over our thoughts. As we do that with consistency, we find them arising with less frequency. The Positive Intelligence book is rich with stories, helpful exercises, and valuable insights. Recognizing our saboteurs, weakening our survivor brain, and activating our sage brain are paths to being happier, more fulfilled, and improving our performance. This book is packed with ways to use positive intelligence at work, in sales situations, in relationships, and in pursuing life goals.